when you are love, you attract love, don't Right. So that's the reason why we have a pastor that we call John the Beloved. <laughs> so he's going to speak to you this morning. It's called his encouragement. So please join me now to just welcome our beloved Reverend John to the mic. Thank you, Reverend John. Good morning, family. Hair and far. Me glad for you know. And for those abroad, me glad for you see me. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the beautiful Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. To everything, there is a season. And you know, we just finished mango season. And right after mango season, pear. So there's a time for every purpose under heaven. And maybe now is the time to begin that diet. <laughs> Our Temple of Light stream team, I don't know if you know this, but they organize the streaming of our weekly services in exactly the same way TV and movie shows are produced. There is a detailed production schedule with timelines for every segment of the broadcast, and every member of the team knows exactly the part they are to play. So I shouldn't have been surprised when my friend Tony Henry, com Henry commented a couple days ago, you know, John, Sunday, October 4th will be the start of season two. I said, season two? He said, yes. It's, it's the beginning of a new season for the love stream. So I want to welcome you all to season two, episode one of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Today's episode, as you have been told, is titled, To Everything, There is a Season. And those of you who are biblical scholars know the rest of it. And a time for every purpose under heaven. On October the 1st, you know, the world observed the, inter the International Day of Older Persons. Mm -hmm. And as I will uh, be marking another birthday in October along with many of you, um, I, it was very much in my consciousness. So I, I mentioned it to a very good friend who lives abroad. And she said, and I want to quote, oh, I'm so glad I did all that I, I did during my fruitful years. She never had a child, so I know her fruitful years weren't about childbearing. So what, I asked, my dear, do you consider your fruitful years? And her astonishing answer was, the years when I could do something. What an amazing statement. I said, you can't do nothing now. What happened? Your hand joined church? I hope if it joined church, it's the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. But even there, you can do, and more importantly, you can be what you came to earth to do and to be. But I've been thinking a lot about these fruitful years. What are the fruitful years of a person's life? If we are to believe what society would have us believe, we might suppose that they are the years between reaching maturity and middle age. And you know, even that is, is, is interesting because when I was in my teens, middle age was thought of as the 40s. And I remember, you know, at 13, people who were 25 seemed ancient to me. Did, did, did you have that experience? We talked about old people and they were 30. So, According to the race belief, after middle age, which is age 40, there is a gradual decline in our ability to be productive, a kind of gradual drying out of the reservoir of mental ability and ideas and creativity and the ability to think constructively. We are expected to be able to do less work and less thinking so that by the time we have reached the age of 65, we are worthless as far as productivity is concerned. And so we should step back and take it easy on a pension that will scarcely cover our minimum requirements. What foolishness. Such nonsense has cheated the world of untold riches. 
The productive, fruitful years of an individual's life are unlimited, absolutely unlimited. And we can be fruitful in every single season, season after season after season. You see, the fruitful years are not a certain time span stretching from one birthday to another. They are the giving years, my friends. The years in which an individual gives their best that they have in them, and not for their own selfish promotion, but for the good of their neighbor and for the good of the world. Every season can be fruitful if we discover the hidden potential, the hidden strength, the hidden splendor, the hidden glory of God that is seated at the very center of our beings. So let's be clear about this. The fruitful years, the giving years in every season are those in which we labor with all our love to express the real self, the infinite self that is within each of us. And when we do this, there can be no limit to what we can accomplish, whether we be 20 or 120. Infinity knows no time limits and sets no value on the age or the lack of it. God works constantly, my friends, uh, through every available instrument that he has created. And once we have learned that God lives deep within each of us, that in reality we are not flesh and blood but spirit manifesting through this vehicle of flesh, we find within ourselves the capabilities of which we may have never dreamed, the depths of understanding that we may have never plumbed, a new awareness of life and a fulfillment of joy that can be beyond our fondest hopes. Do you, friends, think that your good has been swallowed up by the passing years? Do you feel that you are no longer useful in the world and that there is nothing left for you to do but to fold your hands and sit and wait? Remember Grandma Moses, the American folk artist who began painting in earnest at age 78? Maybe you will never paint amazing pictures, but there is something that you can do. There is something that needs to be done that can only be done by you. And as I said to my friend who was talking about she's glad she did what she did when she could do it, uh, the one I told you about earlier, I said to her, you know, love, maybe now that you are living with your son and daughter-in-law and no longer have control over the housekeeping, as you're used to in your own home, maybe your job is to hold the light in the home that you are now living in and to keep the flame of faith and love burning for your son and daughter-in-law. She said, mm -hmm. But this is what Jesus had in mind when he said, let your light so shine. Let your light shine. Because your because luminous, luminous spirit, spirit may well, well be a contagious influence for good, for good. That is that the that greatest, greatest gift you that you can give to your, to your world, world, to your family, to your family and, to and to all humankind. Your presence, your presence on the planet, on the planet of this particular time is a precious gift to humanity. You are here because there is something for you, not just to do, but there is something for you to be. Now more than ever, the world needs humans being. Being what we were put here to be, a light and a flame of love that warms every heart and speaks to every soul. You know the story, there's a story of a woman who couldn't wait for her time to die. <laughs> you know, Ecclesiastes says, a time to live and a time to die. But she had quite ignored the business about the time to live. She couldn't wait to get to the pearly gates because she had questions 
and information that she wanted to give the Almighty. And so she passed. And when she got to the gates, St. Peter began processing her. And she said, look here, man, just, just don't bother with all the formalities. Just take me to the big man right away. I have urgent matters to talk to about him. And she was so insistent that the Almighty WhatsApped Peter at the gates and said, it's okay, P, let her in. I will deal with her. And so she was ushered into the throne room. And it was an amazing sight, you know, as, as we have been led to believe in the, in the, in the, the tales and the myths and the st beautiful stories over the years. There were angels chanting and praising God, casting down their golden crowns before the glassy sea. But she didn't notice any of that. It was quite lost on her because she wanted to talk to Big Martha, as we say in Jamaica. And so she stormed up to God and she said, I couldn't wait to get here to talk to you. Do you know what is happening down there? Do you know the chaos and the panic? Have you heard as nobody told you about man's inhumanity to man? Do you know about the abuse of the women and children that you created? Have you any idea about the corruption and the crime and the violence? Are you aware that there is something that is ravaging the earth called COVID-19? Why don't you do something? Why don't you send someone? You know, the Almighty, as she paused for breath, <laughs> said in a loving voice, Dear, I did do something. I did send someone. And she was about to say, I know you sent Jesus. That was a long time. He said, I sent you. I sent you and you and you. I sent you. I sent you. I sent you to make a difference. You know, friends, God sent you. How marvelous, how wonderful the universal love that is manifested here, right here in our lives in this season that we are living in you and in me, and in all of life kind, in all of humanity. Can we look at each other and see in each other the God potential there and say, this is the real you, this is the real me, this is the world and the people, and I am the person I was meant to be. And so, my friends, this brings me to your assignment. Regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living know that whenever I give an encouragement, I leave an assignment. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is to answer this question in writing. Write it down. I know you may think about it from time to time, but write down and answer this question in your journal. In this season of my life, how can I be a beneficial presence in my world? In this season of my life, how can I be a beneficial presence in my world? Who am I here to be? Since God sent me, What am I meant to be being in this season? Whatever that season is for you. I want you to really think about that. And I want you to know that you must, I beg you, 
register for Summit 2020. Because that is, will give you an opportunity perhaps to further explore that. What are we here to be individually and collectively? What is our mission? What is our task? What is our vision? What is our purpose? For the great privilege that we have of being on the planet at this time. And what an awesome blessing it is to be a member of a community like the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Whether we are regulars or we come occasionally or we used to come and don't get out so much anymore, we still want you to be a part of this amazing conversation about our purpose and our direction and what we are here to be. A university student told this story, which I love, of someone who didn't let her winter season affect her fruitfulness. And I want to quote him. He says, the first day of school, our professor introduced himself and challenged us to get to know someone we didn't already know. I stood up to look around when a gentle hand touched my shoulder. I turned around to find a wrinkled little old lady beaming up at me with a smile that lit up her entire being. She said, hi handsome, my name is Rose. I'm 87 years old, can I give you a hug? I laughed and enthusiastically responded, of course you may. And she gave me a giant squeeze that belied her age. It was really a strong hug. I said, why are you in college at such a, a young, innocent age? She jokingly replied, I'm here to meet a rich husband, get married, have a couple of kids, and then retire and travel. No, seriously. Answer me seriously. You see, I was curious what may have motivated her to be taking on this challenge at age 87 in this season the winter season of her years. She said, I always dreamed of having a college education and now I'm getting one. After class, we walked to the student union building and shared a chocolate milkshake and we became instant friends. Every day for the next three months, we would leave class together and talk nonstop. I was always mesmerized listening to this time machine as she shared her wisdom and experiences with me. Over the course of the year, Rose became a sort of campus icon, and she made friends wherever she went. She loved to dress up, and she reveled in the attention bestowed upon her from the other students. At the end of the semester, we invited her to speak at our banquet, and I'll never forget what she taught us. She was introduced and stepped up to the podium, but as she began to deliver her prepared speech, she dropped her three by five cards on the floor. Frustrated and a little embarrassed, she leaned into the microphone and simply said, I I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so jittery. You see, I gave up beer for Lent, and this whiskey is killing me. <laughs> I'll never get to my speech back, get my speech back in order, so let me just tell you what I know. And we laughed, and as we laughed, she cleared her throat, and she began. We don't stop playing because we are old. We grow old because we stop playing. There are only four secrets to staying young, being happy and achieving success. You have to laugh and find humor in every day. You've got to have a dream. You have got to dare to dream through every season of your life. When you lose your dreams, you die, and there are so many people walking around who are dead and don't even know it. There's a huge difference between growing older and growing up. If you're 19 years old and you lie in bed for a full year without doing anything, 
you will turn 19. You will turn 20. If you are 87 and you stay in bed for a year and never do anything, you will turn 88. You see, anybody can grow older. That doesn't take any talent or any ability. The idea is to grow up by always finding the opportunity in change. God bless that rose. Finding the opportunity in change. I just wonder how many of us are finding the opportunities at this time in the history of humankind during this which is known as a pandemic. It would be lovely if we started a pandemic of love, yes? That it's so highly contagious. She said, have no regrets. The elderly don't usually have regrets for what we did, but for rather the things we did not do. The only people who fear death are those with regrets. And she concluded her speech by courageously singing Bette Midler's The Rose. And she challenged each of us to study the lyrics and live them out in our daily lives. At the year's end, Rose finished the college degree she had begun all those years ago. And one week after graduation, she died peacefully in her sleep. Over 2,000 college students attended her funeral in tribute to the wonderful woman who taught by example that it's never too late to be all that you can possibly be. And it is never too late to dream. So that is the story of Rose. This is not an isolated case, my friends. Thousands have proved that the fruitful years the giving years are not bound by the seasons of life. There is a wonderful little, the, the, the Science of Man textbook calls them meditation, but they really are, for me, contemplations. Uh, because we use meditation in a different kind of way. We use meditation, as, you know, the technique uh, as being, one of the techniques being to, to have a mantra, or there are many meditation techniques, but these which are called meditations in the science of mind textbook are really, for me, contemplations. But this contemplation is on page 520 of this amazing book. And this, this meditation is called The Time Has Come. And I'd like to say it line by line and ask you to repeat each line after me. The time has come, the hour has struck. Hour has struck. The power from within me has come forth and is expressing through my life. The power from within me has come forth and is expressing through my life. I do not have to wait. Today is the time. I do not have to wait. Today is the time. Today I enter into all truth. Today I enter into all truth. Today I am completely healed. Today I am completely. Today I enter into my inheritance. Today the truth has made me free to live fruitfully. Today the truth has made me free to live fruitfully. And so it is. And so speaking of contemplation, my friends, please join me on Facebook Live every Monday morning at 6 a.m. for quiet moments in the garden with Reverend John. We'll share a short contemplation, whisper a prayer, and set the tone for whatever your purpose is under heaven. For to everything, everything, there is a season. And a time for every purpose under heaven. Don't ever forget that God sent you. Namaste.